Prisma 6.2 just landed and there are some great new features at this release. Let's check them out today by going over this very simple schema. We've got this user model here. I'm targeting SQLite. We've got our dev.db file here ready to go. Everything is set. So let's take a look at the first new feature which will be very well loved by SQLite developers and that is we now support enums in SQLite. So if you've used SQLite before and you've wanted to do something like enum role for example, Prior to this release, there wasn't support for this in SQLite, but we can now do this. So if, for example, we wanted to apply a role here, defaults to user, we can save that and let's do npx prisma db push to get that into place. Everything is now loaded, we're good to go. No more red squigglies here telling you that you cannot use this in SQLite. So that is good to go. Also available in SQLite now is the ability to use JSON fields. So for example, you could do data with a JSON field here, make it optional perhaps. This wasn't available before, but at 6.2 it now is. So support for these features, which we could typically use with Postgres or MySQL, these are now available in SQLite. Tying into this, why don't we check out another new feature, which is a new method called update many and return. So if we're over here in our server, we've got this new method that we can use called update many and return. There it is there. And before this release, we only had access to update many. And when we would execute this method, we would get a result back, which would just be a count of what has been affected. But there are many cases where we actually want to get those affected records back so that we could maybe send them back to our front end. So we've got update many and return to do just that. Let's do where email contains, I think I have a Gmail address in the database right now. The data that will supply to this, let's pass in role and we'll make the role admin. Okay, so if we log this out now, console.log users, let's take a look at what we get, npm run dev. Okay, so the update has been made. We've got this array now of the affected records. There's just one record in my sample database here, but we get the idea. We've got this list now of data that has been updated. So very useful in cases where you want to use that updated data right away. Just to show what we had before this release to see how that works, we can do update many and see the behavior there. So update many would do those updates, but we would just get the count of what's been updated. So we can use update many and return, which is supplementing create many and return, which was at the last release. So now we've got both create and update many and return. Okay, so the next feature that we'll look at now is support for another type of auto-generated value. So if you're working with IDs, typically you would do something like this. Maybe you want an integer field and you want your ID field for this table to auto-increment. That's a common pattern, but we might also have something like this where let's say we have a model called post and we've got an ID which we want to be a string and we want to default it to a CUID or a UUID. That's a very common pattern. We have support for a new one now called ULID. So what is ULID? Well, here it is in GitHub. This is the spec for it. It is a universally unique lexicographically sortable identifier. You can check out the spec. It's github.com slash ULID slash spec. The TLDR for this is basically, it's 128-bit compatibility with a UUID, so it's got some similarities to UUID, but these values are sortable in ways that UUIDs are not. Also, it's a 26-character string, whereas a UUID is 36 characters, and it's got some other kind of nice things, like if I wanted to double-click on the value that's produced, just a double-click like this, I can get the whole value highlighted, whereas because we have those dashes in UUIDs, we have to kind of highlight things like this, so just a nice thing to have. They're case insensitive, no special characters, so they're URL safe. And this is a type of ID that more and more developers are wanting to use. So we've got first class support for it now in our Prisma schema. So let's see how this works. We can do ID post and then maybe just content is a string, title is a string, something like this. That's good enough for now because we just want to demo this quickly. So what we can do is npx Prisma db push. Okay, so our post model is in. Then if we go to create one, we'll see how this works. Let's just go over to our existing Prisma Studio instance and we'll fire that back up to get the latest. Now back over here in the browser, let's check this out. So we have got our post model. If we add a record, we've got hello for the content, hello for the title, we'll save this change. And there is our ULID value. 
Okay, so the final feature that we'll look at today is something that's been around, but it's been a preview feature up until now, and that is the omit API. So we've been able to do something like this, where let's say we've got this user model, and we want to do a query for data that's in this table, and we want to specify a single field that we don't want to bring back in the query. Oftentimes, this could be something like a password field, right? So a password as a string, we don't want to surface that in any results that we bring back through our database calls. Now, way back before the omit API was in preview, so this preview feature here of omit API, what we would do is we would just have to go and specify the exact fields that we would want to bring back and negate that password field, for example. But that gets tedious, and especially if you have a lot of fields in your models, that can be pretty cumbersome. So what we can do with the omit API is we can specify a field that we don't want to bring back. All right, so let's make this an optional field and let's see how this works. We can do npx prisma db push again to get this against our database. And then over here in server.ts, let's try this. Okay, so const users equals await prisma user find many. And what we can do is we can say, let's omit that password field. So omit password true. Let's log out those users, console.log users. All right, let's check this out, npm run dev. So there's our user records, just one record right now, but no password field. And just to prove this out, let's say we wanted to omit first name. We'll make that true as well. Let's see what we get. Okay, so no first name there. So this feature has been around, but it has been a preview feature until now. So what we can do is we can just take it right out of preview features and we will be good to go. So let's do npx prisma generate just to prove this out. npm run dev to get the latest. And there we go, operating as expected. All right, so as a recap now, these are the great new features at 6.2. We have got support in SQLite for enum fields. So we can do enum, role, for example. We've got support for JSON fields as well in SQLite. We also have this new method called update many and return. So we saw that, update many and return. This complements the create many and return method that we saw before in the previous release. We have also now got support for this new ULID auto-generated value. So ULID here can be passed to your default value. And that again is a what? It is a universally unique lexicographically sortable identifier. And you can read up on the spec here to find out why you might want to use it. And then finally, the omit API, which we used to have to bring in as a preview feature if we wanted to use it like this, where we omit certain values, that is now stable, that is generally available. If you've got any questions about the features in this release, please feel free to drop a comment below or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or at prisma on Twitter. Thanks for watching.